Hi everyone, it's my honor and pleasure to introduce our work on 3D object checking in point clouds. Given a video of point clouds and its template in the first frame, the task aims to localize the 3D target bounding box in the sequential frames. Point cloud checking is essential for autonomous applications. It's also advantageous over the existing RGB based 3D tracking methods when RGB information is degraded or even inaccessible. Three types of point clouds characteristics bring challenge to the task the sparsity, disorder, and that target sometimes can only be partially observed by being either occluded or out of scope. Then we ask if we could formulate an end to end deep network for our task both specialized and applicable. We ask this question since we find no similar works in the literature, and we believe that an end-to-end -end mechanism can better fit target's appearance variation during tracking. Let's first retrospect some related works to see the challenge. The first and only pioneer effort named SC3D generates proposals of point cloud using common filtering and conduct template matching in the same fashion. The command filtering is predefined to make SC3D not end-to-end -end trainable. There are also three other main problems as in the right text. On second thought, we can resort to 2D end-to-end -end tracking, but it operates on regular image pixels to calculate cross-correlation between template and search area. This regularity contradicts the intrinsic sparsity and disorder in point cloud. Similarly, the RPM branch does not suit our task as well. Altogether, 2D cell means and SC3D focus on template size minimum target units. SC3D feeds the target units one by one to consume much time and turn not end-to-end -end trainable. Instead, we focus on one single point as minimum target unit. This change of view helps us speed up and enable an end-to-end -end mechanism. Our key idea is to excavate the potential of points. We first localize potential target centers and then execute point-driven 3D target proposal and verification jointly. The first problem is that only template contains target information. We then leverage three main clues to augment search area C's with target-specific features. First, their 3D coordinates to retain spatial geometry. Second, their point-wise similarity with template C's to mine resembling patterns and reveal the local tracking clue. And third, encoded global feature of target from template. Due to template C's disorder, raw target-specific features can be inconsistent during point-wise similarity calculation. We accordingly apply symmetric max pool to ensure fermentation invariance. Embedded with target clue, each such area seed can directly predict one target proposal. But we suppose it captures limited local clue and we follow VoltNet to regress the search area seeds into potential target centers and cluster them to liberate local ensembles for final proposals. But we consider each seed with target specific feature contains which target clue and can be assessed with its targetedness. Hence, we added seed-wise targetedness branch, which we believe can regularize earlier feature learning and strengthen the representation of potential target centers for improved proposals. To conclude, our P2B has two parts, target-specific feature augmentation and 3D target proposal and verification. Our point-to-box network is end-to-end -end trainable. With the above designs, P2B attempt more than 10% improvement and high efficiency on multi-category Kitty dataset compared with SD3D. Here we give some detailed comparisons to show our advantage. This advantage holds on in both dense and sparse scenarios. Here are some running examples for P2B. These intermediate results show that P2B has learned discriminative search seeds and informative potential target centers gathering around the ground truth. Here, P2B mostly failed when the first template was too sparse. Then we show P2B could improve with more informative first frames. That's all, thank you.